Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and uh, this is going to be uh, a really, really fun, very slightly controversial show. Uh, I'm very excited about it, but uh, if you are interested in anything that I'm going to be going over in the show, uh, make sure you go to the website jerrysartorama.com and type in today's class code, which is JL303. Now, the subject of what we're doing, we are painting oil paints on paper. I, I know the purists out there who love uh, oil painting are going to be yelling at me going, don't paint on paper. I get it. I get it. I know. I get it. Um, because there is a thing that happens when you put oil paint on paper. It starts to break down the paper. The fibers of the paper start to break down. Plus you have the issues of running the risk of having your oil kind of leach out. I have, I have a visual. I have a visual. Haha. <laughs> uh, so this is just oil paint on regular paper. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can really see it on the back. That oil just starts to leach out. Uh, can you guys really see that? I don't know if you, like, the extent of how much oil has come out of there. Let's go to that overhead. Oh. It's, some issues with oh no, there's some, some technical difficulties. Yeah. I appreciate you guys just bearing with us. Um, but yeah, I'll show you guys a close up of that. But yeah, so oil painting on paper in general is a bad idea. This entire show is dedicated to oil painting on paper. <laughs> um, in fact, I did oil paint on paper several times. You'll see it. Um, so there is a trick to being able to do this where you don't have archival issues. Um, so essentially, we need to seal your paper just like we would a canvas. Uh, now, why would you paint on paper, I guess, is one of those questions that everyone's going to be asking. Uh, for one, uh, it, it's a tactile thing. Uh, sometimes you just really like the texture and the feel of paper. Um, the other thing that I've seen uh, quite often is people painting uh, in like little sketchbooks. Uh, like you can actually do oil paintings in sketchbooks. Uh, I know that there is, what is it, Cesar Santos has a gorgeous sketchbooks that are uh, absolutely wonderful and he has oil paints in there. But you have to go through a process in order to make sure that it is safe for your oil paints to go on paper. So uh, I wanted to walk you guys through that process today uh, and kind of show you a little bit of the differences between what you can do. Um, so let's go over supplies real fast. Um, we are going to start off with paper. Um, I'm going to go with the New York Central 100% uh, cotton watercolor paper. Um, this is 9 by 12. Uh, we sell it in all kinds of different sizes. This is just loose leaf paper. This is not a block of watercolor pa paper. Um, I can, it's a little tight in there if I can get it out. There we go. Paper. So this is 140 pounds. Um, now, let me put this down here. Um, I have hot press and cold press because you can do either. It does not matter what the surface texture of your paper is. Um, if you have a preference, you can go for that. Uh, if you you know don't, I, I, you can give a couple of different varieties of paper a try. That's the really cool thing about paper is that you can get all kinds of different papers and see how it works. Um, so other than paper, you are going to need to seal your paper. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to grab is PVA sizing. Now that is not to be confused. Oop, I did not close the lid all the way apparently. My bad. Uh, that is not to be confused though with PVA adhesive. PVA adhesive is a glue. You don't want glue. You want PVA sizing. Uh, you also want to make sure you get a pH neutral PVA sizing. This is really important uh, because again, we are trying to work on that archivability. We're already kind of messing with that whole standard uh, of it, but uh, we want to make sure that there's no acidity in our materials that we're putting down first on the paper because that acidity will also break down your paper. So we want to make sure that we don't do that. Now I'm going to put this gesso over here because uh, once we get past the sizing, uh, we are going to have to usually uh, put some grounds down like gesso or an oil ground and I'll show you kind of that process and go over the details on that. Um, how are we doing on the cameras being switched? So I wanted to show uh, this specifically. 
in detail because this is um I really want you guys to really really see there we go okay so this right. is just oil paint on normal paper I hope you guys can see how much of that oil has come off on the outside edges of like right around that and it's really noticeable when I flip it over that oil is now leaching and absorbing into the paper uh, that is not ideal that is where this paper is going to start degrading and that's not archival this paper is going to break down now it won't break down immediately you might have a really gorgeous you know, painting on here and you don't really see a whole lot of that oil leaching uh, because it is like I can see it in person but it is subtle uh, so you might be able to get an oil painting on paper and not see too much of that but just the fact of you putting oil paint onto paper it's gonna have that that issue so over the years like if I were to you know if I had done this painting on just a normal piece of paper and I sell this over the years this is going to start having some issues with the archivability that paper is going to start getting real rough and not great um, so i don't want to have something that i'm possibly going to sell be a problem down the road um, i also don't want like if i have a sketchbook that i'm working on i don't want that to have an issue where like because that's where you learn that's your sketchbook that's where you figure things out and it's great to have those quick little studies but like I always use my sketchbooks as like points of reference. Like I go back and look at things and go, oh, I forgot that I had done this. And then I can try it again in my future, you know, artwork. But it's just one of those things that you don't want anything to really degrade. Um, now, hopefully I can shake this. Uh, PVA sizing, by the way, you definitely want to shake this uh, because it can settle. Uh, now I'm going to do it over here because I don't know if I got the lid perfectly on but it's leaking a little bit, but I had been using it earlier, so it might just be me. Yep, that's that's why I did that over there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is a child-proof cap. You have to push it down to open. So excuse me for a second, because I've been struggling with that. There you go. All right, so I got a mess already. I'm usually not a mess, jeez. Okay, cleaned. All right, so all I'm going to do is pour PVA sizing into a palette. And that is it. I do not need to dilute this. I don't need to do anything else. I just need to put PVA sizing onto my paper, right? So you guys can see, make sure everything is on camera here. Um, and I'm going to actually move this out of the way because you guys might be able to really see how thin I put this down with that side camera. Um, move this up here. So I, I want my PVA real close to my paper, right? I don't want to have to travel very far. Um, now the other thing I am going to be using is a uh, varnish brush. This is our two inch disposable varnish brush. Uh, the reason why I like it is because it's really, really soft for varnishing, but you see that like snap that it has? I like that in a brush when I'm trying to really quickly put something down. I know it's going to retain its uh, kind of shape and it's got that really good uh, softness to where I don't get crazy brush marks or anything. So pop this a little forward here. I'm going to just, I'm not trying to saturate it too much. Just get PVA on my brush, right? Hopefully you guys can see that. Now we want to get this paper saturated but we don't want to leave puddles. So I'm gonna quickly do this. Hopefully you guys can see. Are you guys picking up the glare on how much is on there? I could probably do this as well. There you go. You can see just how thin that is. It's already starting to absorb in my paper, but there are no puddles. I do not want puddles because that would be a waste and it would give you an uneven surface in the end. And I just go all the way to the edges, no problem. Now if you're doing this in your sketchbook, you can absolutely do like a little spot. Uh, you don't have to do the entire page, which is really cool. But the reason why I wanted to do this and show you is that you can start to see 
this is doing what watercolor paper does. It's starting to buckle because this is not pre-stretched. I didn't pre-stretch this. If you want to avoid this issue, you can pre-stretch your watercolor paper. Uh, we have an entire episode on that. So if you guys want to go watch that, um, you guys can do that uh, at a later time. But uh, this right here is not bad. This is not a, a bad buckle at all. Like it can even get a little bit worse and go up a little bit. It's going to flatten out as it's drying because that PVA is going to start uh, pulling it together. All right. So I'm going to let this cure for, I just kind of leave it for a day. Um, I'm sure in a couple hours, it's actually probably going to be totally fine to put on the second coat, but I, uh, prepared myself and I have, um, I'm going to run out of table space here because this is wet <laughs> and I have oil paint over here. All right. So just wipe up the PVA that's on the, the ground there. This already has one coat of PVA. Um, I wonder if it's, it's like white on white on white. I'm sorry. It's hard to tell the difference. Um, but I can tell that there's a slight sheen to this. It's not super glossy, but it is ever so slightly sticky. Uh, the reason why you have that almost slightly sticky feel is because this is PVA. It's polyvinyl acetate that, that sort of polyvinyl part of it is um, what's gonna give it kind of like, like, almost like a plastic coating type of a thing. But you can see um, it dried pretty flat. There was really no issues. I think it kind of got buckled up because I was bending it around, uh, but it dried very fat, flat. Uh, now we're gonna do the second coat, right? So we're gonna do the exact same thing. and get this nice and saturated, but not extra soupy. And this is why I also put my uh, PVA in a little palette cup, is because you can very easily put way too much on. And you do not want to waste your materials, right? Now, how are we doing on questions also? Um, thus far, we have, would you need to gesso it after you do this? I am so glad you asked. I figured you would talk about that. Oh, yes. And then can you tent the PBA? I love that you asked that question, too. Oh, so good. All right, so this right here now has two coats of PBA. The, the bowing and warping kind of thing that watercolor paper just tends to do when it gets wet. Uh, it's actually uh, a little bit more uh, minimal. And when this dries, it also dries very flat. There's really no buckling or anything like that. Again, this is 140 pound paper. Um, so that's just, uh, I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna put all this. Put it down here, okay. Now, um, alternatively, if you don't wanna go out and buy PVA, you can absolutely seal your paper with a matte medium. Um, I would suggest a matte medium, not a gloss medium, because that glossiness is gonna give you a very slick surface that is not great for paint to really grab onto. Uh, you, the mattifying agents in this kind of give it a little bit more of a tooth, and this is gonna be better for you. So if you happen to have matte medium at home, that is your first step as well. You could use matte medium to seal your paper. You essentially just wanna create a barrier between your paper and the paint, the oil paint that you're gonna put down, right? Now, um, you guys were asking about tinting it, right? I'm working on watercolor paper, okay? You could very easily do a watercolor, you can ignore that, uh, watercolor wash and then seal it with PVA. Now I was doing this test just to see exactly how much, uh, and actually let's switch that overhead camera because you might be able to see a little bit better here. Um, I was trying to see exactly how much that watercolor wash would pick up. Uh, because this paper is really great for lifting and uh, picking up your things, uh, your your uh, pigments from the paper. Uh, this, because you work so thinly and so quickly, you want to make sure you do as few brush strokes as possible when you're applying this. Um, but I will say, when I sealed this for the first time, the tip of my brush was pink, which was not great. 
That means I know that this was getting picked up, but it didn't smear around so much that it was really that crazy noticeable until I put another white piece of paper. Can you even ignore that? I had, to, I had to label every single one of my papers because I just had so many pieces of paper lying around, so I had to know which ones had how many coats on of PVA on it. <laughs> So uh, yeah, once I put another piece of paper next to it, you can kind of see that it's a little bit of a pink tint to it, and it's ever so slight, but like, I then sealed this, and I also tested a couple pencils on top just to kind of see how the PVA would take the pencil, because I knew that, that would be a thing, because if this is in your sketchbook, you're gonna want to sketch on it. I also wanted to make sure that I could seal graphite in with a PVA, which you can, uh, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, uh, I know that PVA seals your paper. PVA still has a stickiness to it. Uh, with that being said, um, I wonder if I can actually, here, these both have two coats of PVA on it. That's what I would recommend, minimum. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this, but it's sticky. It's gonna stick to itself. It's, it's similar to acrylic in the sense that it wants to stick to itself. So if you have a sketchbook and your pages are now stuck to each other, you run the risk of them permanently sticking together. That's why you would, uh, in a sketchbook especially, need to do something like a gesso. Um, and that even includes uh, if you use a matte medium because matte medium is acrylic based so that acrylic polymer wants to stick to another acrylic polymer. So if you have two pages next to each other that then get folded in on itself, uh, that's where you run that risk. And trust me, there is nothing more irritating and more sad and more just depressing than when you open up your sketchbook and your, your pages either stick together or peel apart and your paintings are now ruined. Uh, so we have a question. Yes. Um, on YouTube, someone wanted to know, will this only work on cotton rag paper? Again, really glad you guys asked that. So uh, before I get into other things that we can do here, um, I wanted to show you a couple different types of paper. And I specifically wanted to show you different weights of paper. So uh, I just grabbed literally a variety of papers that I had uh, just lying around this, the studio here. Uh, there's my pencil sketch. I, it's just a scribble, but I sealed it. I, I did that before I sealed it with PVA. So if you have a sketchbook and you uh, do a quick sketch, like if you're out and about doing plein air paint or t uh, urban sketching, that's really fun to do, right? You can then seal it and paint on top of that, which is really great. Um, so this right here is 135 pound heavyweight drawing paper. So this worked really well. Um, it does have a bit of a bow to it, and that's just because we're getting thinner in our paper, right? Um, this is Bristol. This is 100 pounds, and it's starting to bow even more, but if I just kind of like pump it down, like especially if this is in a sketchbook, you know, you're gonna have that folding that kind of keeps your pages a little bit straighter, um, but this is Bristol. Uh, this is 92 pound Soho drawing paper, uh, which is a great drawing paper, great sketchbook paper. Uh, we're starting to get real thin here. Uh, this is n not ideal as far as my surface. Like I think 100 pounds is the lightest weight of paper that I would recommend you doing, unless it's really in a sketchbook. Cause like this 92 pound uh, drawing paper could hold up if it's in the bounds of a sketchbook. Like that structure will help it kind of stop bowing like this, I guess is the best way to, to say it. Um, now this, this is like the saddest thing ever. <laughs> uh, this is 60 pound uh, Strathmore sketch paper. So uh, this is a great sketch paper. Again, if, it's, if you're using it for dry media, it is just so thin. Uh, like you can even see my fingers kind of through it. Um, it's it's really, really thin. So I have so many, I don't know if you guys can see that, so many little like bumps and it, that just, I would not 
be happy painting on the surface. So that I would be fighting with. Yes, you absolutely could do it if you really, really, really wanted to, or if that's the only thing you have available. But you're gonna be fighting with this way more and it's going to kind of give you a bad experience. Whereas like if you get something that is at least 100 pounds, like look at the surface on this, like it's still perfectly smooth. It might be bowing a little bit, but I, if that's in a sketchbook, that's still gonna be minimal. And that smoothness, there's no like little wrinkles or anything to the surface of that. That's where you're gonna have a much better experience. Question? Yes, two. Okay. Do you need to paint both sides of the paper? Great question. And then second question, mm -hmm. if it does the bowing thing, if you wet it on the back, will it straighten out? So uh, that is a uh, first, first question. What's, I'm sorry, what? Do you need to both paint both sides of the paper? Yes, that one. Okay, let's do that question first. So if you are just doing a single painting and you don't intend to paint the back of the paper, just do the one side. You don't need to uh, do both sides. That's just a waste of materials, right? Um, so if you are doing a sketchbook, and I'm so glad you actually brought that up because, and you guys might want to, oh wait, no, I guess this is going to be the best camera ever. Ah, this right here is a sketchbook that is going to be our giveaway for the show. Um, yes, let me go to the side camera and I'll show you, show it off nice and it's, it's so fancy. I'm so excited. So this was handmade by myself and Mott. This is a team effort. Uh, Mott bound it and did the cover for me as well as uh, put the glycine interweaving. So we have glycine in, in between every page uh, and I prepared all the pages. So every page is primed on both sides. That's why I would want it to be primed on both sides because I intend to paint on both sides, right? And then I also put the glycine in between knowing that this was gonna be a sketchbook and that we were actually making it a sketchbook. So now every page is protected, right? So this is gonna be our giveaway for the end of the show. Uh, there's gonna be, of course, a link in the description, right? Is that where it's at? We'll put it in comments. Okay, we'll put it in the comments uh, for you guys. Yeah, we'll pop it in the description for later uh, later viewers as well. So if you're viewing this and you are interested in getting this sketchbook uh, as a as a little uh, thank you for watching this show, uh, definitely check out that link. It will be open for a week. So we are airing it today. I don't know what the date is because time is irrelevant. It's the 29th. Of 29th. August. Okay, today's the 29th and it's going to stay open for a week. So it will close on Monday. I know that date is September 4th. So September 4th is the last day you can actually uh, click in to try and get your name in for a freebie drawing. Uh, so that is why you would prime both sides is if you intend to use both sides. That's the really the only reason. Uh, now, the other question you had was to fix kind of the, the bowing problem, and it's really more noticeable in the Bristol, right? Um, so what I used to do as a trick, uh, an old illustrator trick, is take it, flip it, take um, the same thing, and just paint a big X on the back. And we're gonna see if this works because I have never tried it with PVA, personally, uh, but what's, that is supposed to do is kind of counteract that bowing. Um, now I've done that with uh, thicker boards and with different type of medium and it's worked. I just don't know if that's going to do the trick with this. Um, but if you do want to really counteract that bowing, um, you can uh, pre-stretch your paper like uh, I said, with the watercolor paper, as long as it's heavy duty enough to where it can withstand the, the pre-stretching. Uh, again, 100 pounds is the least I would go if you're gonna like really pre-stretch your paper. Um, usually it's 140 pounds is what you're gonna find. Um, but you can pre-stretch your paper to alleviate that, but you can also, uh, if you gesso both sides, or not gesso, I'm sorry, size both sides of your paper with PVA, that should alleviate the issue. Um, I just don't know if this is really gonna do much. The other thing, I would just personally put a big book on top of it and put some weight on top of it and then that should flatten it right back out. 
Um, so that is my extra pieces of paper. Um, now, I don't know, especially with this one, uh, mind you, if you do a full like painting with um, watercolor and especially gouache and uh, like thicker layers, this was a very thin wash, right? If you start getting into thicker layers of, or more complicated layers of watercolor and gouache, that would be more likely to pick back up. So with that one, the only way I could um, suggest you kind of get around that is maybe do, using a spray varnish and then doing a PVA sizing because that spray varnish would kind of seal your paints. That also might seal the paper, but it wouldn't give you a good ground kind of a thing. Um, I, I don't know about that one. That one might be a little bit more complicated. But uh, this right here, before I, I thought I lost my uh, post-it note on it, I just remember this one has two coats of PVA. So somebody was asking about um, if you add gesso to it at the end. Now, you guys can technically paint on this. Um, now, I have a couple examples. And also, um, if you have handmade paper, which is really fun, um, this right here is, I don't remember, it was just something that we had lying around. Um, I think it's new jobby that we have on the website. Uh, it's just a handmade paper. It's really lovely, handmade watercolor paper. Uh, I did not add that to the water or the teacher's cart. My bad. I will add that later on. Uh, but this isn't like a pure white. Uh, this has like a nice creaminess to it that I really, really loved. So when I added two layers of PVA, I was like, man, I really don't want to lose that. But you know, you, you can paint on this, but it's a little on the slick side. If you want to have a better ground uh, than just PVA, you can apply a clear gesso if you don't want to lose what you have underneath. Like this, I had intended to put clear gesso on and have that kind of almost grittiness to it. Uh, that would be a really lovely ground to paint on, as well as like your pencils and everything like that. It really kind of grabs on. But I could not find my clear gesso in here, so... I did not have a chance to do that, uh, but I'll have to go do that later because I'm definitely going to paint on that piece of paper. Uh, but I have two layers of PVA on here. This has a layer of gesso, two layers of gesso. So I don't know if you guys can, yeah, you guys can really see the difference between that creamy white and the white gesso. So the white gesso is going to give you that stark white base no matter what's happening. So uh, this right here is something that I would do for a sketchbook if I had something that I really did not like and I wanted to paint on top of it. So I would uh, seal my paper with PVA, uh, paint some gesso on top, and I have a fresh page to work with in case it's a sketchbook that I really, really love. And there's just that one page in the middle that I'm like, I don't want to rip it out because that, you know, removes the integrity of your book, but it's also an eyesore in the middle of your sketchbook. It's, I've been there so many times. If that's happened to you, please let me know that I'm not alone. <laughs> uh, now this one over here, this is a little bit different as well. I wonder if you guys can see the difference in the, the color. Um, this has a little bit more of a shine to it because this is oil ground. So this is the, um, the oil painting ground, which is quite lovely, especially if you are painting with oils. Um, so I had done these three as a tester uh, because I wanted to see if it kind of changed my mind on whether or not I liked painting on one surface or the other, right? So I just did kind of a quick little painting of a, of a burb, cute little burb. Uh, tempted to do similar paintings. <laughs> They're not exact, but um, so the, when I was painting on these, all three of these, each one has its feel and it's really, really hard to describe. Um, the PVA definitely did feel a little bit slicker, um, but it's not that much of a slickness. Um, but you can really tell how it kind of changes in the way that each one interacts in the the light washes in the corners. Um, so this one kind of gave me more of like those uh, scratchy brush marks that it didn't really want to absorb into the paper and kind of spread out, uh, or not the paper, the sizing, the ground, because it didn't have a sizing. It's it's or a, a ground. It's just the sizing. 
So that one didn't really want to uh, do that. Whereas like this being the gesso, gesso is absorbent. It wants to really grab on and it kind of had a little bit more of that spread that I like um, that I can kind of get those almost washy kind of effects when I add more solvent. And I'll do that on the, the pages as well here. Uh, and then this right here is the oil ground. So uh, this was quite lovely as well, um, but it, it was like painting on an underpainting, if that makes any sense. Anybody who's familiar with oil painting knows what I'm talking about. It just grabs on and it's ready to rock. Um, it's just a really lovely surface to paint on if you're painting with oils. Um, I, I liked all three of them for very different reasons and I was not dissatisfied in any of these. So if you have a chance to be able to, to play with your surfaces like this, I highly recommend it. And um, you can definitely see that that creaminess of that paper with the PVA sizing is lovely. We have a question? I have a few. All right. Um, will a bottle of PVA stay fresh on the shelf for a while? I don't know if PVA has an expiration date. <laughs> um, I don't think it does. I've never seen one go bad. Yeah, I, I don't honestly know. Um, that I think would depend on the manufacturer and I would check with them yeah. because every PVA brand can be different. But um, I have never seen a bottle of PVA go bad. Not as long as it's like sealed and everything. Like yeah. That dry out but that was yeah that's just evaporating air, yeah because yeah. it's it's uh water-based so you can clean up with soap and water like if you want to wash out your brush soap and water um you know make sure you use a good brush soap protect your brushes but it doesn't need any solvents or anything like that um whereas the oil ground by the way does need a solvent in order to clean your brushes and you also want to kind of get it a little bit broken down but that's, uh, that's a whole different thing with oil ground. There's, I'll have to do a whole different video on how to apply oil ground. If you guys are interested, make sure to put that in the comments if you are. You have a question? Do you find that oils blend the same if you do it this way? Like, do you, is it the same as like painting on a canvas? Yeah, because it's essentially, it's the same exact ground. So if you're familiar with painting on a gessoed surface, um, is it, I was like, this one. <laughs> I'm trying to remember which one's which. I did not write that down, it's just the feel. Um, so this worked exactly like uh, a canvas would. It just happens to be a piece of paper. So what's really great, uh, and also if anybody's worried about the buckling of this, uh, this handmade paper, uh, because I had it sitting around for so long, I don't know if it just was me doing something uh, or if I had it sitting in an awkward position. I think it was just me sitting in an awkward position because like, my stack of paper, the whole stack, I think that was me. Um, so it's very humid in here, so that's not yeah, a situation. Humidity in paper, it is one of those things. We have a humidifier, so. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, it's it definitely feels exactly like what you would expect. Um, the only really, really cool thing, uh, well not the only, sorry, wrong words there. Uh, the really cool, a really cool thing about this is that if I were to sell this, I need to ship it out. The cost of shipping this out is a lot less than the cost of shipping this out. Especially the thicker canvases, I'm knocking things over, excuse me, like this. These are gonna cost way more to ship out than a single piece of paper. Uh, this I would put a piece of glassine on, pop it in a crystal seal bag, put two pieces of uh, cardboard and put it in a stiff mailer envelope and then ship it off and it is always good. Of course, add like the do not bend stickers and stuff like that, but uh, that's the easiest way to ship it. And I can tell you right now, uh, it's about three to four dollars UPS because I do that all the time for prints that I sell. Like it's just, it's like selling a, a print and so easy to, to mail out to your customers. Yes, we have a question? Yes. Maxahis on YouTube wants to know, would you recommend using exclusively gesso to seal in front of the paper for oil painting or is PVA vital prior to using gesso? You need to seal your paper before you put gesso or any other ground on. The reason why is because you need to seal your paper. The, the PVA seals it. The gesso just gives you a nice painting ground that your paint likes to attach to. You don't have to have the gesso 
like I said, the PVA really seals it and that is a, a ground that you could paint on. Um, now I can also show you that as well. While you're doing that, can you use oil pastels on the, on this style? Yeah, of course. Is there any issue with that? Yeah. And then... You get to also use this with acrylic paints. Like, it, that's, it's acrylic primed. Now, again, that's acrylic priming with the gesso. Once you do an oil ground, you have to put oils on it. Acrylics do not stick to oils. Oils will stick on top of acrylic, though. That's why this being an acrylic base, you can put oils on top of it. No problem. Um, and then Dennis was saying, he's wondering if he's correct that PVA is the modern substitute for rabbit skin glue. It is. Thank you for bringing that up. Now, uh, the really great thing about having PVA uh, as opposed to rabbit skin glue, because rabbit skin glue is, is stinky. Okay, I see Katie's face. Mm -hmm. It is very stinky when you prepare it. Uh, not only that, it's, it's rabbits. Us little baby rabbits. I don't, we don't like that. We're, we love our, our little floofs. We like them hopping around, eating their carrots and stuff. Um, so beyond that, rabbit skin glue over time still absorbs moisture from the air. In a humid room like this, uh, rabbit skin glue absolutely can still pull in moisture. Now what that means for your paintings is that the oil paint that's on top and nice and cured is going to stay still while you're surface is trying to move and that tends to crack it so you can have cracks in paintings because your rabbit skin glue sizing on the bottom of it it's not that archival uh it is traditional yes as far as all the old masters they use that yes but um that's why you can sometimes see those hairline cracks in really old paintings is because the rabbit skin glue is trying to absorb and shift and the oil painting doesn't want to so it cracks you have any other questions yes, yes. Barbara on YouTube wants to know once your paper has a layer of PVA does blah, blah, blah. once your paper has a layer of PVA on it does it grip the paint as well or does it kind of smooth out the texture of the paper um, and that's why I wanted to show you this actually maybe we can go to the side camera that might be a little bit better um, I don't know if you guys can see this okay this is PVA on the natural paper I can even show you this is why I grabbed the whole stack of paper I can show you what the natural paper looks like without anything on it. Essentially, you're getting the exact same surface. It's the same. Now, um, this is two layers of PVA and two layers of gesso. You still have that texture of that paper coming through. It still wants to shine through. Now, this is oil ground. I'm trying to make sure that that focus. So it, of the three, this one knocks out the texture the most, but this really gives you that surface that your oil paint is going to really grab onto. This is the most adhesive as far as oil paint to a ground, but like all of all three of these work. I hope I, I answered that question as well as you guys needed it too. Okay, so I wanted to... Amanda, you had asked a question that got me getting ready to paint. What was that question again? I'm sorry. So many questions. I love it. Um, you, you were asking if uh, painting an oil... If it blended the same. Blended the same. Uh -huh. That's right. I've asked... I'm, I'm sorry. This is, you have asked a lot of questions. I'm trying to remember what it is. We're getting on some tangents. I love the questions. If you guys have more questions, please let me know. Um, now let's go to that overhead camera because I can show you guys. I'm just going to be using mauve because I felt I'm in my purple era. This is a very purple, purple moment. Yeah, Amanda, that was really for you. Uh, so I'm using mauve from Lucas 1862. I love this brand. It's really, really wonderful oil paint. And I'm using our Studio Solve. So I just have Studio Solve, a brush, and my oil paint, right? Um, so typically... Speaking, I'm going to knock down my oil paints with some solvent just to get a nice thin lean media or thin lean layer. Um, so it let me kind of knock some of this off my brush too. And I need more hands. I need this rag over here. Sorry. This is the PVA sizing. It spreads just fine. It's a little slick. Um, compared to the gesso, and you'll see that in a second. Oop. 
get a little bit more paint on there because that would be an underbound layer. There is not enough paint in there. Now, there is a little bit more pigment in that, but as far as like it grabbing onto the paper, it wants to absorb into that surface, that, that ground that I gave it a little bit more than this feels like it's just sitting on top. If that makes any sense, it's, just, it's really like a feel thing, but that's essentially what it's doing. So this paint really wants to grab in. This one's more sitting on top, but it's not going to affect your paper underneath. Now, I will say um, one thing that just, I f almost forgot to tell you guys before. Um, if you are a messy, messy painter and you have a tendency to get paint everywhere, you might need to PVA size both sides of your paper. Because if you get it on the edge and it gets underneath, now you have oil paint on your paper and it's going to start attacking it from this direction. So if you are a messy person, just keep that in mind. Um, we, we know who we are. <laughs> uh, now this is the oil ground. Let me get a little bit. more solvent just to kind of have a little bit more of a gradation and that right there is quite lovely um, again this really has that grip in it but this has a little bit more of where it's similar to the PVA where it's got that slickness but this absolutely will adhere really really well um, not like this won't adhere you're not gonna really have any issues with this but this is gonna be a better uh, grab for your your oil paints. I hope that makes sense. Do we have any questions about these thus far? Okay, because then the other thing that I can do. So um, if I put pencil on here like I did, I will run the risk of having the pencil interact with um, my oil paint. and start blending, but I could absolutely go on top of my oils, or the bring the oils on top of my sketch as well. And you can see it through there. As long as I don't scrub that, that's not gonna disappear. But I will say, um, I definitely for this one had a pencil sketch and I didn't want it visible. So I uh, put more opaque layers of paint down and it's not visible at all. Granted, I really want to darken that background because her two-tone hair is kind of blending in. So that's okay. Um, now, I wanted to show you as well the difference between cold press and hot press. I also have not added a layer of gesso to paper that I was going to do. We kind of jumped over that. While you're doing that, could mm -hmm. you use uh, water mix of oils on this, or does it need to be ground differently? Nope, absolutely. Totally the same. A water mixable oil should be treated just like a normal oil. Uh, it is a normal oil paint. Keep that in your mind. Normal oil paint. It just happens to be uh, added with a surfactant. surfactant. Um, some of them are tweaked on a molecular level, which is really fun in the science realm. Mod, I'm looking at you. Uh, but it's where that's concerned, um, either way, it can be broken down with water, uh, but it is still an oil paint. So it's still going to dry like an oil paint. It still needs to be put on grounds like an oil paint. All right, so I'm trying to get like a brush, dry brushing effect here so you guys can see. the differences between this nice flat hot press surface and this cold press. I hope that's visible. It's like you, when you get that dry brush you can really see it kind of skip across those little textures whereas like over here it's just a solid <coughs> solid line. So both surfaces would work. You just get different different feels, very subtle.
but absolutely you can use both surfaces. So I have a feeling someone is going to ask. All right, now do we have any more questions? Because I'm kind of, that was all the things that I had to show you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I do take it back. I was going to go over varnishing. Do we have questions first, though? Oh, there was a question about varnishing. Perfect. So, well, for that, though, we have a lot of questions on YouTube. Perfect. Hit me with them. Okay. So, to clarify again, PVA versus gesso, Maxa has wanted to know if they didn't put a layer of PVA before they layered their gesso, the oil paint would soak through the gesso. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, it would. Because the, the gesso wants to absorb your oil paint. So your gesso <clears throat> is going to be not a barrier between your paper and uh, your your paint essentially so it's going to go through the gesso down to your paper and then start destroying it on that level which is not fun not good keep your work archival another question more questions yes okay shelly on youtube wanted to know does preparing the paper a certain way impact the drying time the drying time of oils of the oils yes no no your oils are going to dry through oxidation so uh, no matter what you do on your surface, no matter if I put oil paint on a glass surface, uh, well, all right, so I will say, technically speaking, if you put oil paints on a canvas, it can dry sort of through both sides of it because it has more airflow, uh, whereas I would assume the, the paper would do the same thing. It's going to be the same, essentially. Same thing as canvas. Um, but like I was going to say, if I put it on this palette, um, there's no way that airflow can get through the other side of that, so that might take a little bit longer to dry, but there's nothing you can do really to this uh, that would change the dry time of oils. Yeah. And finally, Barbara wanted to know, would this technique also work with chipboard? Yeah. This technique would work with a lot of different surfaces. Um, as long as your PVA will stick to it, um, and it's kind of like a, I think like I'm absorbing ground like a chipboard is, it would work. It would work. Um, I absolutely, yeah. Uh, now, um, do you guys want to see me gesso a piece of paper? It's pretty standard as far as like how to just, you know what, we have time. Let's do it. Let's do it. And that is not even open. Um, does acrylic primed paper need the PVA sizing to do this? To do oils acrylic on it. primed paper yeah like if it's already if it's primed for acrylic does it also need this if you're going to use oil on it yes this would also need to be done um because like we have a canvas paper um all right with keep in mind uh if you have something that's called like an oil paper arches stonehenge they make a specific paper called uh oil paper that is sized for oil painting. Acrylic paper is sized for acrylic painting, but it does not have that like serious barrier that you need for oils, which is why it's gonna be a little bit less expensive, but it definitely still needs this process in order to protect it. Now, um, I am going to add a little bit of water to my gesso. Now, I'm not adding any old tap water. I'm adding distilled water because I do not want to incorporate any kind of bacteria into my gesso because if I do that, then that's going to live underneath my painting and that also cannot be archival over time. Um, so just a few drops just to get it kind of a little more fluid because straight out of the, um, the bottle, it's perfect for canvas, but because I want to really keep that texture of the paper, I don't want to really, I'm going to just put that on my, on my apron. Uh, I don't want to really lose the texture of that paper or of the paper. So I don't want to really put a thick layer of gesso. Very, very thin. In fact, I think I want to put a little bit more water. I'll mix that with the brush. So consistency of like Thin cream is what we're looking for. Why do we always equate it to food? I'm, I am, it's like dinner time, it's hungry. It, it be it's me, hungry. it's hungry. <laughs> yes, I said that. All right, and then we're just going to apply it just like we did the PVA. Nice and easy, thin layers. You don't want to have it puddle anywhere. 
Again, this is why I put it in a dish, not directly on my paper, because you don't want too much, especially if you're trying to keep that texture of the paper. Now, I will say one layer of gesso, as long as you get a good, uh, make sure that like nothing is left behind kind of a thing, no, no bald spots or anything, you're really thorough about your application, one layer of gesso might be okay. I would always suggest put two on just to be safe. Um, but, sorry, concentrating and painting, whew, hard to do. But yes, that's not good. I blobbed, excuse me while I remove this blob. Yes, we have a question? Yes. Um, could you clarify some of the differences between priming paper and canvas? Isabi on YouTube is a little concerned that their primed canvases aren't archival since they typically are just cotton and gesso. No, actually, uh, prime canvases are not just cotton and gesso. Usually, it actually does have a layer of sizing on it. Most of the time, if you look at um, our website, I believe, it should tell you that it comes with like two layers of sizing and then a layer of gesso and like a layer of, especially the um, the fancier ones, they will tell you exactly how many layers of sizing and oil priming and sanding and all the things that they do. Um, it's It can get ridiculous, but the more that they have to do, the more expensive your uh, canvas is. But usually if it's a cotton canvas that is gessoed, it does have sizing that is to protect it. Because this is essentially the exact same thing. This is just paper. It's 100% cotton paper, whereas that is 100% cotton rag that is woven in a different manner. Um, so yeah, there you go. There is my, um, I didn't put this off to the side. Oh, there you go. I didn't get a bucket of water for my brushes. That's okay. I'll wash that as soon as we're done here. Um, but that's all you have to do for your, your gesso. Just a little bit of water just to kind of thin it down. Really thin layers. Um, now I know I can see my brush strokes, but it's I can still see like the lovely texture of the paper. It's really hard to see that because it's just white on white. Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Should have probably got a black uh, tablecloth today. All right, we have a question. Nola's wondering if you were to frame this, would you need to do so under glass? I am so happy you said that. Uh, that was the last thing that I wanted to go over is varnishing and framing. Um, so. I have, I know this is really hard to, to look at because um, it might hurt your eyes, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a little bit of a glitchy, <laughs> I'm looking at Katie. She always has a hard time looking at this. Um, this is a, an oil painting that I did on oil paper. Uh, and as you can see, it's shiny. Uh, I varnished this with the Instavar. I put two coats of Instavar on here, just like I would a normal oil painting. Varnish it just like you would a normal oil painting and you're fine. Um, this is protected. I know I don't have to worry about the surface. This does not have to go under glass. Um, and that's how I would recommend you approaching any oil painting, really. Uh, now, the other thing that you could do, especially, like I said, if you want to sell this and not have to pay for massive shipping because it's now on a giant panel, um, you could uh, send this with a panel or, or something where they can have it framed in a way that is um, not going to have an issue where like it has a backer in a frame and then it's still exposed, but like you can have it like packaged to where it's nice and safe. Um, the other thing you can do, where did I put, ah, found it. You could mount it to a board. This is uh, just a Da Vinci uh, ultra smooth panel. Um, you could absolutely mount it to that. That way you have something to kind of really pop it into a frame. Um, but you, you could just pop this into a frame without having uh, it actually on a backer, as long as you have like a cardboard backer or something. Like a hardboard would be great, um, something that's nice and archival. Um, but you don't have to do anything with the surface of this if you varnish it. And I would just do that absolutely just as you would a normal oil painting. Any other questions? All right, we got through them all. Woo! Awesome. All right. So if you guys do have any questions in the future on this, because I know, like I said, this is a bit of a controversial subject because I know my, my purest painters out there, I, I 
see you. I get it. You want to paint on canvas. That's okay. You can paint on canvas. Other people can paint on paper and they can do it archivally. That's a fun word that I don't think is technically a word. Archivally. That's not a word. Yeah. I don't think it's a word, but it's now a word. It's a word okay. now. <laughs> if we make it a word, it's a word. Um, so uh, yes, it, this is the way of, of painting on paper to where your artwork can st t stand the test of time. That's apparently hard to say. Uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It was a lot of information. Again, if you have questions in the future, you can always make sure to pop them in the uh, you know little questions box. In the, blah, blah, blah. Wow, my mouth just stopped working. Yep, take a second. You can always pop your questions in the chat below, that one. <laughs> And I will always make sure to keep an eye on them and answer you as soon as I can. So that was it. Again, if you are interested in anything that I've used here, make sure you go to the website, jerrysartorama.com, and type in the class code JL303. And of course, join us next week because we have a guest coming on. So that is going to be Facebook only. Uh, just keep in mind because it is going to be through Zoom. Uh, it's going to be Tristina from Pebio. And she's going to be talking about Colorex watercolor ink techniques and i'm very excited about that yeah somehow that mouthful i was not stuttering or having issues on that note i hope you guys have a wonderful night and i will see you next week bye